dancer is Anthony, country dance X, and I am extremely excited. I've been trying to set this up for months, and I finally have a very, very special guest that I'm so excited to have. And just so you get a hint, those of you who might know who he is, I'm just going to give you some of the accolades this guy's got. He's, I, I was reading through this, and I could not believe this was only one person that did all this stuff. Eight time U.S. Open swing dance champions in five divisions. Six-time World Country Dance World Championship title in two divisions. Three-time USA Grand National Champion. Numerous national titles in Hustle Salsa Cabaret and just inducted into the California Swing Dance Hall of Fame. The youngest person inducted into the UCWDC Country Dance Hall of Fame. National Bobbers Hall of Fame. Jesus Christ. World Swing Dance Hall of Fame. Living Legend. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So we can stop. It's good. <laughs> Guys. Welcome, Robert Royston, to X Dance. Robert, Anthony, welcome. I love everything you do. First of all, I appreciate the bio. Uh, basically, what you just said is he's been around a really long time. <laughs> so notice that it said and he's also seemingly dance ADD because he goes all over the place. No, it did say the youngest person inducted into UCWD's country. It just didn't say what year. Right. No, that was, I was inducted, I believe, in 2007, and right. I was uh, 37 years old. People uh, are doing math right now. Right. And then um, I was also, they also changed the rules to induct me into the Living Legends of Dance Society. Um, and they also, uh, mostly youngest in the Walk of Fame for the U.S. Open. So, yeah, I'm a member of seven different Hall of Fame-ish type things. Um, and proudly saying, again, like when it says I'm the youngest, it just means I started really early. Right, right. Just, right. I started when I was really young. So just to put things in perspective, so I started dancing country in 96. And during that time, um, you had already been country dance world champion at that point. Twice. Right. right. We won in 95, 96. Right. 95, 96. 95, 96 and then. 95, 96, 97, 98. And then, uh, and then in the. Um, in the Showtime Invitational, that was Masters, and the Showtime Invitational twice um, in the early 2000s. Okay, and then um, you also were US Open Swing Dance Champion. What was the year that you, what four was years. your first year won that? Same four years, 95, six, seven, and eight, same four years. So just put in perspective, those of you who follow Rose and I online, this guy was already world champion multiple times the day that I learned quick, quick, slow, slow in my first <laughs> The day that I learned quick, quick, slow, slow was 1985. How old were you in 1985? Uh, I was in fifth grade. That hurts a little, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really young is what we're saying, Robert. Right, right. No, I started competing in 89. I think the first time, uh, and this is just me going back, Nostalgia, the first time I heard of Robert Royston wasn't when you won World Champion, because I wasn't in the world at that time. The first time I saw you was on the uh, TNN Country Dance Invitational. I think I saw you uh, and several other people. And th th you guys, back in those days when I saw that, you guys were the guys that all of us wanted to be like at that moment. That was really magical time. The TNN, you know, we came in second the first year to Tony and Yvonne Gooch, who were brilliant and one of the greatest two-step couples of all time. Um, and uh, and then we won the next year. Uh, and then we, we um, I had knee surgery the following year, so we, we didn't dance in it the following year. We uh, presented the awards. That was really in the thick of it all, you know, like the world championships of country dance were like, you know, 2,500 people, you know, where like it was, it was massive. We had three stands of, you know, people. Well, this this kind of leads me into something I kind of want to discuss with you and you guys, you and I kind of discussed, I mean, a long time ago about the, the, the way that country dancing is, I, I personally feel, I, I don't, you tell me how you feel. I, I believe that country dancing is starting to grow again. Like it's becoming more popular. Country music is starting to grow again. Yeah. Um, and with that, how do you feel like the future of country dance competition, not just socially, but country dance, where do you feel like that direction is going? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm kind of no holds barred. Like I'm just going to be honest, right? Thank so, you. so the where do I think country competitive dancing is going? Uh, I I I don't. Okay. It's just it's just uh, it's it's not necessarily shrinking in numbers, but it's shrunk a whole lot. I mean, the world championships right. this year will be lucky to have six hundred people. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, uh, and my last world championship 
at 2,500 people. Right. You know what I mean, so uh, the problem uh, when it comes to competitive country dancing is that, and let me say specifically UCWDC competitive country dancing. Let me say organized competitive country dancing. I don't mean our competitive country dancing because I think that's actually booming. Is uh, I don't want to say weak because I'm not. Uh, I, I'm supportive of the UCWDC because I I have a career because of them, but uh, and so I I I can love my family and still criticize what they do. And they, for me, they forgot their feeding system, right? So our feeding system was the clubs. What you would do is we'd go to the clubs, and when you go to the clubs, and then you would go to, like my first competition I ever went to was 1988 in Tahoe, and what you saw at the bar was a little like watching tennis, right? So I can play tennis, and then I watch the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. and oh, oh my God, like. <laughs> What they do is amazing. It's still recognizable to what I do. They just do it significantly better. Right. It'd be one thing if I play tennis and then I turn on the TV and what they say is tennis is pickleball. I go, well, I guess there's something similar, but it's not really the same. If, if I get what you're what you're saying when it comes to like country dance, you feel like if someone goes out to the bars now and they're dancing a two-step and whatnot, and then they see what is being danced in the formal competitions. They, they won't even recognize it. It's not even recognizable. Like, I, like it's so far removed. And so, and the costumes are far removed. They look nothing country. You know, there was a time, oh God, I'm such an old man. There was a time you walked into a ballroom and everybody was wearing cowboy hats. Right. Like, not just for competition, right? And everybody was wearing cowboy boots. You know, uh, I won my world championships in Levi's and Wrangler jeans. Right. You know, I wore black jeans. I won uh, my last world championship in 1988 wearing Dan Post boots. Oh, okay. Right, like, and I always in jeans. I was like, I'm not gonna wear those ballroom pants. And I'm not gonna, cause like I'm a freaking country boy. And I, and, but, but, so I remember we were in uh, Colorado, 1992. Uh, yes, Colorado, Colorado Country Classic, 1992. And uh, a couple had come over from American Smooth. And they competed in Division One, and they won. Uh, it was me, uh, Lorene, Randy and Rhonda Schatz, and Tony Yvonne Gooch. And on Monday, at, in the lobby, I said, you've just opened a can of worms. Mm -hmm. You've just opened a can of worms. That, that, that what was danced out there that wasn't really country dancing won. Because right. we're going to have a flood of ballroom people who maybe, to be politically incorrect, maybe weren't super successful in ballroom. Right. Found that they could come over and all they had to say is we're ballroom dancers. And there's this like, there's this, uh, there was never a, a sense of um, pride in being country dancers that we we immediately went, well, they're ballroom, they must know more than us. Mm. But they but they knew more about their style of dance, right. not about our style of dance. And so we immediately went like, oh, this person came from ballroom. Now this is pre-days of YouTube or anything else. So you couldn't go like, let's see how good they were. Because let me be honest, most of the ones that fluttered over weren't very good in ballroom. Right. So, but we went, oh, oh. We have to like, and then we have to set up like a ballroom model and we have to start to have pro-am and we have to do. And so we were like, well, ballroom does this thing. So I think one of the great things that like Lorene and I did, uh, Cody and Risa did, um, Tony Yvonne Gooch, of course, you know, what what lots of us did back in the day is we, we were country people who then went and got ballroom training and were able to keep authentic what we did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like there was the, so you could still, we could still go to the bars and two-step our asses off you know right. what I mean? Like most professional country dancers today, most competitive country dancers actually aren't great social dancers. Like they're not gonna, and they don't go to country bars and they don't even listen to country music. So that, that it turned into like this different thing. I remember saying to Dennis Waite and to Larry Spolvado, like, listen, we, we're, we are killing this. We are going to kill this. I said to them, Pro-Am is gonna, is gonna be one of the demises of, of country dance. It all sounded good except for the fact that then ballroom studios were never gonna feed to us because there's no money to be made. Right. So ballroom studios would never feed to the country events because again, no money, no contracts, none of that stuff. 
And what we started to do looked too far removed from what was going on in the clubs. So the club wasn't going to feed to us either. So the clubs weren't going to feed to us anymore because what we were doing was looking too different from what the clubs were doing, right? So mm -hmm. I remember one time we were in Portland, Portland Dance Festival, and they did a honky-tonk contest um, locally, and the winners got tickets to come to the Portland Dance Festival. And they walked in, and I remember they walked in in their creased jeans and their cowboy hats, and they didn't stay two hours. And they left. They were like, this is not what we, this is nothing like, they thought they were going to a hybrid or a heightened level of what was going on in the clubs. And they were terrified. They were like, we don't know what this is. And they split. People in the competitive country world were like, well, that's because they don't know and they should take more lessons and here's our syllabus and all of that stuff. And I was like, ah, we are, we are running away from our roots and our feeding system to go into a place that has no feeding system because the country clubs aren't gonna feed us. Uh, and, the, and the ballroom studio, there's no money. They're never gonna feed us. So slowly, in the, early, in the early 2000s, it just started to die. By the mid 2000s was dying a lot, right? And and uh, and now we sit where we sit now, where we basically have a couple of people feeding in, but we're just recycling the same 500 people nationally. And right. um, uh, it's it's really a bummer because I feel like the country scene, you know, I think, I, I think country music right now is 18% of the market share, which is the largest percent of the market share of any music genre. Right, and has been actually been very consistent. That's very, and country clubs are giant right now. And the club, the club contests are booming. Two step and country road nice. swinging and like all that stuff, you know. And the UCWDC thumbs their nose at that. They're like, ah, that's not what we do. And they need We're training, right. they need blah 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 blah. And I go like, you people, they're the we want those people to come in. We need those people to come in, right? And uh, but. The UCWDC is right now, in my opinion, run by a bunch of by a bunch of people who aren't lifestyle, who aren't country in lifestyle. They're, they're, it's it's no longer run by people who are passionate about uh, country as a lifestyle. Genre. You know, I, I can't speak to that. The people, I mean, I don't know a lot about that, but I have had multiple conversations lately with uh, more than one, I mean, multiple event directors and say, I see what you're doing with your, your Facebook, your YouTube channel, whatever. How about, can you, how do we get you involved? And we've got this UCW, this event coming up. Can we get you to help with this marketing? It's like, you know what, here's a deal. Like, I feel like pretty confident. I could feel your event. Um, I could help you get the word out. We put a, a lot of bodies in the door, but I'm not sure you'd like how I did it. I'm not sure you'd like the crowd that I would bring. You know, I've been to several of these competitions, like here in Houston, um, there in, in Austin and Dallas, they have these competitions at the bars. I mean, these things are huge. Like they, they announce it and these people are just traveling the circuit and and doing these things. And uh, it, it's nothing like what you or I would know, you know, in the ECWDC or any of these other events, it's, it's very freestyle oriented, you know, right. and, um, but man, the crowds, the energy is, it's real. Like I, I went to one just a couple months ago um, in Scottsdale and it was a lot of country swing. They had some, you know, some um, one step and two step and they had, you know, some West Coast swing divisions, stuff like that. And it was a second year event and it was more packed than any sanctioned event that I've been to right. in several years. Now here's the thing, I wanna say like, oh my God, if, if, if the UCWDC could have a rebirth, I would love it. Like, I really, I, in my heart of hearts, you know, I want the UCW to succeed. I want it to grow. I really do. I think at its roots, it's an amazing organization. I think it started for all the right reasons. Um, you know, there's, I wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for them. So my my criticism of the UCWDC. It's for uh, love, it seems like. From a place of love, I love the UCWDC. I really do. Like, I, I'm honored to be a member of the Hall of Fame. Uh, like, all of that. And, and legends, I mean, I grew up watching amazing country dancers. Um, and there was just a time when, you know, I don't know, it was just, it was a different beast. And they'll say, because country was big then and country's not big now, but country is big. It's that we forgot our feeding system. It's got to be at some point almost undeniable. I mean, you see, I mean, we're still on our channel and stuff. We're still teaching two step. We teach West Coast Swing. We teach nightclub two step. And the stuff that you would see, yeah, we're teaching that. But we're teaching more of an, a social level. And then we, we've come really like we've gotten to know a lot of people in the 
the country swing world because they have their own world, right? So we've gotten really into that world. We've gotten to meet a lot of people around in Texas that do a lot of one step and these various groups and stuff. So we've gotten connected. So we're starting to understand that world a lot. And, you know, I, here's what's strange is I've had, you know, I talked about the conversation they had with people uh, wanting me to help promote their events. But I've also gotten a couple phone calls lately of UC or DC directors wanting me to come into a UC or DC event and teach workshops in country swing. And the thing is, is I just started teaching country swing like, I mean, a year ago, year and a half ago. I just thought it was something that, uh, you know, people did at the rodeo and slung each other around. And as I've gotten into the world and I've gotten to understand it and understand it, it's like this dance is actually like it's growing it's booming like people are we used, we used to call it we used to do four count swing we either called it aggie swing because it, it was done a lot by at, at, by lots of people we would see at texas a and m and stuff so we called it aggie swing but um some people call it rodeo swing and whatever it was four count swing in some places you know in in arizona they did their version of it was pony swing right which is just like just that one beat you know and right. uh i mean we used to do it man like when i started dancing two-step in 1985, you would two step on the straightaways, you'd get to the corner and, wah, 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 and you'd just right. and, wah, 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 you know, and uh, uh, man, it's just a blast. There's a guy in Colorado that has a, a, a swing video, a country swing video uh, series. Um, You're talking about uh, Hunter from Show Her Off? Show Her Off, right. Yep. So I reached out to him. Good guy, yeah. Yeah, I reached, I reached out to him privately. I was like, you don't know who I am, but like, I think what you're doing is amazing. I right. just wanted to tell you. Same thing I said to you, right? Like, so, I like, like, yeah, I called when I when I saw his channel and I saw what he was doing. Like, it was nothing like what I was to. I mean, he's he'll tell you he's not really a dance teacher. You know what I mean? Right. He's a guy who dances, but he has had more impact in just getting people who want to dance and off the couch and doing dance. And he's like, he's spreading it. He's spreading this thing. And so I called him just like you did. I called him uh, a couple of years ago and I said, dude, what are you doing? Like, how are you getting this big, huge thing? And, and we talked just through a zoom, just like you and I are doing right now. And I said, dude, how about I, I I'm going to book you a flight right now. I'm just going to book you a flight right now. Let's pick a date. I'm going to have you down to Houston. Uh, we're going to have you to a little class at, at the studio, whatever. I don't know what you do, but like you can come in and do that. And we booked uh, for our set. We had two locations. We booked him at our second location right when it opened and had tickets and we sold out tickets, hundred and something tickets in like a couple days. Listen, I love what he does. You know, the, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm anti dance snob. Like right. I, I, I love dancing. I love everything about it. It's my whole life. I've been in, you know, like it's everything I've ever done. And so, uh, and I love, uh, I love dancing like that is kind of um, culturally specific, right? And so I love country dancing. And when I go to a bar and if people are doing four count or rodeo swing, I'm jumping in, like, let's go, you know? And, uh, uh, and if people, if I go into a bar and people are everybody's arm on top of the shoulder, that's how I'll dance, you know? Yeah. And I don't ever come at it, well, I'm a UCWDC world champion and we have to like, screw all that. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 I don't know, that mentality bothers me quite a bit. Like, you know, I, I believe in, you know, I believe that technique belongs in certain places. I don't think we should be hurting people. Like if, if a guy's hurting a girl, that's bad. But you know, these 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 uh, cowboy swing or country swing or rodeo swing or four count swing or whatever you want to call it, you know, like lots of these guys are really good leads, right? Mm -hmm. And these girls are really good follows and they're not hurting, they're not yanking and pulling like like the, the stereotype uh, says that they are any more than, you know, people People used to do bad two-step. I used to do bad two-step. We all did bad two-step. And sometimes I still do. So. <laughs> so you learn differently, right? So yeah, so like I, I pray for the UCWDC to um, make they made a right, they made a left turn in the mid-90s. They could make a right turn now. I think that, you know, I, I think what from my perspective, what I've seen, uh, and tell me what you think about this. These events that are They're happening never gonna happen again, by the way, UCWDC is never going to happen again. <laughs> You're it's all coming from love, right? <laughs> I, I think what will end up happening, um, if anything, these competitions that are outside the sanctioned world are growing. They're growing bigger. They're getting bigger every year. Country music, and, and people are starting to notice. Just during the period of time that I've been involved in that world, 
I, I was the first person they came that, that had ever really done anything at all. And I've, I've never been like long-term in the UCWDC like you have, but came from that and trained in that way, went into this world. And since that period of time since I've been there, I've seen multiple other people start to show up and I'm starting to see them now starting. I've seen several of them come from the UCWDC and start to compete in these bar comps. And when that starts happening and these things keep growing, it's gonna be impossible to really not see that, to really notice what's happening. Well, I'll tell you, like, a big we, started, we started division, so when I started, it was just division one, two, and three, and division three was fairly new. So it was division one, two, and three, junior, seniors, teams. That was it. So there was no pro-am, so there was basically six divisions or whatever throughout for an entire weekend. So when I was, my first division three contest had over 50 couples. Right, so uh, I never, uh, I didn't uh, win a single world championship uh, in masters with less than ten couples in masters. Well, now I'm gonna I'm gonna be Robert Royston for a second and say some stuff that's gonna upset and offend some people right now. How many world champions are there per year? That's like that's a rhetorical question. Do you know what I mean? 175, and, right? 175. Uh, it's like okay, so I was the only one competing in my division. So, well, did you get first or did you get last? You know, so like which one? In in look, I get it. I, in a way, I kind of wish I would have got in at the point there were three divisions. I might not have won, but like placing, placing top ten, like that is an. Let me tell you what used to happen. This is so fun. So we used to, you would compete on Saturday, right? And then you would, so then they would post finals and it was a mob of people. So imagine division one, two, and three. So division two, uh, division three had like 50, 56 people, I think my first, and there was 40 people in division two and there was like 30 something people in division one, right? So now they post all of them up on a, on a thing together in the hallway. And it, so at, you know, 10 o'clock on, Saturday night, we all mob. So they're like, here's, you know, 150 people trying to see who made finals and who didn't make finals. And, right. and uh, it was it was crazy, it was crazy. What do you think about um, when they started incorporating syllabus? And I get it from a pro-am, you got syllabus A, syllabus B, that makes sense. That, I, I get that, you don't have to be there, but that is an option for people. But I believe for a while, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't they have in certain divisions like division four, I know they've got that you've got to have the basic rule, but didn't they have a curriculum or a syllabus for that at some point? They, and they did. They, 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 yeah. Now that wasn't the case, you know, back in the day. And they were like, ah, oh, we should, we should formulate everything and syllabatize everything. And I get it. I get why the need to do that because it made it easier for judges to not just be their opinion, right? That there was something sure. to compare to, but, but everything can go too far. Like, I feel like the swing world has done it right. Like one of the things that I think the swing world did really, really well, and I coined this phrase years ago, is they kept their streetability factor. Okay. So the streetability factor is what country dancing, competitive country dancing lost. So West Coast Swing keeps its streetability factor. So, which is why, and maybe some of your viewers know who these people are, maybe you don't, but if you look at somebody like a Benji Schwimmer or a Jordan Frisbee or a Kyle Red or myself, or a Tatiana Molman, or a Lorene Baldovi, or a Kalise Key, or a, a, Su a Susan Kirkland, uh, they all look, we all look different. Right. Like, like and, and the reason why we all look different is we're not pigeonholed into having to do like these, these certain things this certain way. And I've said that's one of those things I've loved about country dance since I started. It's, it's kind of like, and that's one of the reasons I fell in love with it. Is you watch the top 10 couples, and even if they had a mask on, you couldn't see their face, you could watch them dance, and you knew who was dancing, even if you couldn't see the face. No, Tony Ivan Gooch, Tony Ivan Gooch, uh, uh, Lorena, myself, Bob and Sarah Bars, um, uh, Carol Shaw and Marta Elder, every one of them looked different. Every one of them. And then like Cody and Risa look different than Richard and Helen look different than Tony and Sharon Lee, right? So like Ronnie and Brandy look different than Rex and Kristen, but you know what I mean? Like everybody looked, you, you could watch it. And I'm going, you know, now into the, into the early 2000s, but like up into the mid nineties, when you watched TNN, we all looked very different. Our right. styles were very different. Like, were we all doing quick, quick, slow, slow? Sure. Did we all do illusion turns? Sure. Right, but but there was our musicality styles were different. How we chose to hit the music was different. Some of us used power. Some of us used comedy. Some like there was just such a different wide variety of, of what we did, and um, 
And so the, the more a dance loses its streetability factor, I feel like the more it can lose its identity, right? When a dance starts in the street, like, and, and I feel like uh, we started in the clubs and we lost that streetability factor. If their UCWC were smart, they would get people like, um, oh my God, tell me his name again from Denver. Hunter. Hunter, right, Hunter, right. They would get people like you and people like Hunter and they would say, hey, like, we're gonna do a Friday night, you know, honky tonk division, you know what I mean? And, and encourage these people to come and and let's let's do everything in our power to make them feel welcome in a house in a house that that their forefathers of honky tonking built. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and I think that there's uh, I, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I, I think that's the key. So if you get those and, and we've got a pretty big audience, you know, Hunter's audience is massive and getting some of these people that are out now. I mean, uh, my friend BJ's from San Diego area. He runs Country Soul. He's got a big audience. My friend Adia, who's also in Southern California, has got a pretty big audience. Country Nomads or uh, Arizona, they've got a pretty good following. A lot of these people that are in this country swing and into, into all these worlds and get those people, if they felt welcome in that environment, it wasn't this pretentious, like we're better than, you know, this kind of thing that, and that's my fear. Like that would be my fear. And if they could accomplish that and you could pull those two worlds and take to those two worlds and pull them together, I think we've got something really, really magical. And I believe it could actually even be bigger than it ever has been before because it's huge right now, overall. It, it, it absolutely is. And I think I think that enough people are finally saying, "Hey, look at look at these YouTubes, look at, look at these people going nuts at this bar." There's a thousand people at this honky tonk in in Houston. I'm just making this up. That are doing the where they just pass by. They just pass by and they do all that stuff, right? I've seen all people sending me this stuff all the time, and uh, and I'm like, how many of those people are going to come to the World Championships of Country Dance? Mm -hmm. None, right? So. You get somebody like like Hunter or like myself or whatever involved, and if you can um, call and connect with me and some of that, and, and if it's something I felt good about throwing the weight of our audience behind, I'd be one hundred percent on board with it. Listen, I'll tell you, like we could get, uh, you know, uh, like I so wish Cody was still alive, but the 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 we could get a few of us old farts, old school guys that also have that other pedigree. Mm -hmm. right that you know the ucwc world championship type pedigree at a high level um uh to jump on board and be like hey we're a part of this too like we'll help judge the contest we'll help like oh my god like i would love to judge some of those contests you know what i mean and i wouldn't judge it like their technique is bad like i would get it you know what i mean what it's supposed right. to be you know what i mean and uh uh and i think there's enough people i think like a ronnie de benedetta would jump on something like that sloan hansen would jump on something like that like I think that there's um, Brandy Guild would jump on something like that. That'd be like, yes, like let's get into let's let's go back and do that. Uh, uh, and I, so I think it'd be super fun, you know, to um, to do contests like what you guys do at UCWDC events to bring people in, and then have a couple of, of crossover people like myself who go like, all right, like let's let's make this all feel very you know, welcome. If you could just make, if it were something where both sides, where you've got this bar crowd and then you've got the, you know, the UCWDC more structured crowd, you put them together and everybody could realize we are all one. We are all country. We Listen, all love another, We all phrase. love that. And right. if that could happen, dude, like it would just be something completely shift and change unlike anything we've ever seen. I trademarked a t-shirt a bunch of years ago called uh, for a, a clothing company that Lorena and I used to have called Dance Without Limits. And the t-shirt was, I speak dance, right? right? And that's the key is like, we all speak dance. Like it does, does, does it make a difference if, if your language is a little different than mine? No, like we, we all speak dance. So like, can we just like not be like, well, my language is better than yours. Instead of just be like, ah, oh, you speak dance, I speak dance too. And this is what my dance looks like. And I really appreciate what your dance looks like. Right. And, and too many times that gets in the way of growth. Right. So you've done all this, you've done the competition, world champion multiple times, US Open champion, all this other stuff you're doing. I saw on a website, I saw something you posted online about the Royston method. Can you right. just tell us about that? So the Royston method 
is, uh, for me, it's a life methodology, right? So the, the idea behind my methodology is I want people to become professional movers. And I mean movers in life. I mean emotionally, I mean physically, um, I, I want them to be uh, uh, nutritionally, I want them to be professional movers in life. And so um, I've gone on to become certified in many, I'm a certified personal trainer, I'm certified in the Franklin Method, uh, in lower back and fascia training, I'm a member of the Asso International Association of Dance Medicine and Science, I've done extensive uh, work with the Institute for Human Machine Cognition, um, so uh, I'm an ideal kinesiologist, so I've done lots of this stuff. Um, to understand the biomechanics uh, of how the body works, right? And how we can move super efficiently. So like how at 51, can I do all the stuff that I do, right? Like, so I'm, I'm still very active. I can climb a 50 foot rope. I can do lots of stuff um, because of how I move my body. So the Royston method isn't about like learning proper technique on how to just do West Coast swing or anything else. It's about, uh, it's a methodology for moving, right? I use, I tend to use West Coast Swing the most as the vehicle, but uh, any dancing um, uh, is usable for, for this methodology. So the Royston Method is my website. I have Fittest Over 50, which is a workout thing that I do. And I have this thing every Sunday called Sunday Science, which is the science of dance and movement. And it's two hours every Sunday. So there's about 900 hours of curated content on my website. It runs kind of like Netflix. And then I'm on it live about four hours a week. So it's a subscription-based site, and I have lots of uh, I have lots of uh, guests. Darren O'Lean, who was in uh, the the Netflix series with Zac Efron, uh, Down to Earth, was one of my guests. I have everything from like testosterone replacement therapy guests to uh, Eric Franklin, who's a movement specialist guest, to Maria Torres, who's a famous choreographer, to Ryan Francois, the greatest Lindy Hopper in the world. Like, I, so I bring all these different facets and guest celebrities and artists in as well. And the goal for the Royston Method is to get, no matter what you do in life, to get you moving professionally. All right, so I'll put a link for, it's, it's, is it just RoystonMethod.com or? RoystonMethod.com. Royston I'll put a link here in the description. Okay, one more question about this. Country dancer, swing dancer, you've done stuff on Broadway, you've got your Royston method, you've got all this stuff. What is it exactly, after all of these things, that Robert Royston can't do? What can't I do? <laughs> <laughs> can't slam dunk a basketball. There you go. Yet. Can't dunk a basketball. But right. I have a feeling if Robert Royston, what, were you 5'8", five, 5'9"? Five, 5'8". I think at 5'8", if Robert Royston put his mind to that enough and folks, I think that Robert Royston would dunk a basketball at 51. <laughs> I love you for thinking that. I'll tell you what, Robert Royston's not gonna put that much effort into it, but I'll three point the heck out of my shooting. So don't don't <laughs> don't give me the perimeter or I'll eat you for lunch. <laughs> so funny. Well, Robert, I appreciate these insights. I appreciate you spending time with it. And it's just been an honor to spend this time with you today. You know, we've been trying to get this together and finally got this together. I'm so excited. I can't wait to people hear this message. Uh, I'm 100% on board with you. And I knew 100% that if I just asked the question, everything that I've been preaching, you would just stand at that podium and just preach it for me. And I was like, okay, and this is Robert Royce. And how do you argue with that? Let me just dump my opinion. You know, all, all I can say is, I'm, I'm hired at this year's world championships. I hope I don't get fired after this interview. <laughs> because because I, I desperately want the UCWDC to succeed. And I think that's the thing. I think we all, um, you know, and you've been in this, you've created a life out of this. Um, and of all the people in the world, you would be the person that has, I mean, just from this conversation, the amount of knowledge that you have in this world and its transitions and its stages and then where it's at and where it can go. I think you have a unique insight for all of us. And I think um, if anything, I don't think you should get fired. I think you should get a raise. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's make sure when you edit that that clip stays in here. Here we go. <laughs> uh, well, listen, man, I, I love all things country dance. I love what you're doing. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, I love what Hunter's doing. Um, I think anything that gets people dancing is good. And anything that gets people dancing to country music is good, right? And uh, uh, I think it's magical when, when you know, I, I say that couples dancing is about two people putting movement to music to create an emotion, either for themselves or for the, or for the people watching or everybody, you know, uh, um, synergistically combined. And uh, so I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. You know, and uh, 
I think there's a place for it. I think there's a place for it. I think there's a place where we can not only coexist, but can help each other, where, where competitive and more formalized country dancing might be able to bring a level of, of um, technique and musicality and refinement without changing the authenticity of the dance to sure. their side. And, and there should be a level of authenticity and a reminder of where we came from that that side could bring to us. And so I think there's really something we can both gain from each other to make both of our worlds better. And, uh, but we have to be open-minded to that. You know what I mean? I'm with you. Robert, I appreciate you being here and uh, look forward to more of these conversations again in the future. And- You all come on anytime you want. We, we can talk about what, what, like, we can talk about anything you want. I was- We can talk about the difference between whiskey and bourbon. Uh, which we did briefly before we started here. These are the important we can, things we got to know. We, we can talk about the, you know, we, we can talk about the greatest country songs of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a countryfile. All things country music, man. I'm, I, I'm, I will rattle off years and albums. All right. Robert, I appreciate you. And Thank you, dude, I appreciate you. Thank you yeah. so much. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Keep it up.